Millions of your taxpayer dollars spent on luxury cars and lavish mansions? Crucial new developments in a massive fraud case in New York City that could potentially put a lot of people out on the street. Crime Sider reporter Graham Cates is here with me. Graham, thanks for being here. Thank you. So you've been covering this particular story, this fraud scheme, for quite some time. Bring us up to speed. Sure. So uh, last year in 2014, uh, there were two different cases started by the New York Attorney General's office and the federal government against a nonprofit called Narco Freedom. And Narco Freedom for about four decades has provided uh, substance abuse treatment for New Yorkers and also housing um, in the last decade or so for people who are um, supposed to be taking su substance abuse uh, therapy. And what happened was uh, the government said that they were basically laundering uh, millions of dollars. Um, they were engaged in massive Medicaid, Medicaid fraud. And this is a company that was valued at $40 million. Wow. Uh, they, uh, they had a, what, the, what the actual federal government called a kickback scheme to take so much of the money that was supposed to be for substance abuse and put it into luxury cars, like you said, mansions. They uh, gave relatives no-show jobs. And again, the, the CEO of this company is a guy named Alan Brand, and it was uh, run with his son, Jason Brand. Yeah, we saw their uh, mug shots there just a little while ago. Uh, I, I just don't understand. I think a lot of people have a hard time understanding why this investigation has taken so long and why these rehab centers are still open. I mean, they were routinely inspected. Government's on their trail. Why are they still open? Right. So they were overseen by a bunch of organizations, federal and state. Uh, but the, the problem is New York City has a massive homelessness problem. And we also have uh, a flow of people who are coming in, uh, back from prison and from jail. And it was kind of a convenient place for, for people to be housed, whether or not they actually needed drug treatment. Uh, and, and now, actually, what we're trying to figure out is what's going to happen with everyone who's being treated by or housed by narco freedom. And the plan, the, the plan that was set uh, forth by the court yesterday is that everyone who currently has housing will be provided some sort of transitional housing. But I was just talking to lawyers for some of the tenants, and, and there's a lot of kind of opaqueness. They're not quite sure exactly how it's going to work and how it's possible. There's at least 1,500 people housed at Narco Freedom, and, and there's some questions about how it's going to be possible to keep everyone in long-term housing. Wow. And now a judge has decided to close 18 of those Narco Freedom rehab centers. But we were seeing some of the pictures of exteriors of several of those centers. What are the conditions like in there? And, I mean, it's already terrible that these folks are going to find themselves on the street. I mean, yes, the judge has said that they have to be funneled into another rehab center, but we kind of know how that goes. I mean, I, I, I suspect a lot of people are going to fall through the cracks. And these places, what, was, what were they like? I've been to a few of them, and uh, for starters, uh, you're talking about maybe eight or more guys per room, wow. uh, each with you know bunk beds, uh, really stuffed in there. And then in court, a lot of tenants, even people who are who are former inmates, decided to show up at court to testify about the conditions. Mm -hmm. And they talked about drugs, uh, overdoses in the hallways, rats, bed bugs, infestations, Ugh. leaky ceilings, uh, and this is all stuff that actually was documented by the Department of Buildings in New York City. But that's just one of those agencies that kind of marked it. In said, we're moving on to the next thing. Wow. And, and Graham, 20 seconds before we let you go, what's being done to recover that money? Uh, so I, that's kind of up in the air. So far, their accounts have been frozen. Alan Brand and Jason Brand's accounts have been frozen. So their houses, and they're not allowed to use those cars. But, but we're not sure what's going to happen with the money. Wow. Graham Cates, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Remember, you can track investigations like this and read up on big crime stories of the day at cbsnews.com slash crimesider.